Who am I, Whitney? <laughs> okay, are you ready, Whitney? What am I? Ah! Who's that Pokemon? I could do it too with can do. You didn't know the advert. Whitney, you've lived a sheltered life. Ooh, that camera needs zooming out a little bit. Who's a cutie? Who's a cutie? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> Max is like, me, I'm a cutie. <laughs> Look at him. He wants a cutie. He's a cutie. Yay. Are you a cutie? Are you a cutie? <laughs> just sat on me. I live here now. <laughs> Max, introduce the video! Okay. Oh, and he's gone. Okay. Well, thank you, Max. Oh, he's gone! And he's back. Oh! 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 Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to another unboxing electric boogaloo video. And today, we're covering a new dinosaur for the entire toy line, I think, of the Jurassic franchise. Something that has been one of those indie dinosaurs that I think a lot of kids growing up in the, uh, the early 2000s, or maybe even 2010s, I don't know. Lord knows, when I was a teenager, it was the new cool thing. Now oh. Spinosaurus. Got it being introduced by, of course, the one and only, the beautiful assistant. Gimme, hey, gimme it. Maxi, let's get it. Maxi, let's get it ready. Oh, oh, there we go, Max. We did it, didn't we? The there is in the sword. <laughs> Now, we haven't had too many herbivores in the Jurassic franchise that can fight back, Triceratops and Stegosaurus, to name a few. And that's pretty much it, really. Therizinosaurus was one of these weird dinosaurs where we didn't know whether it was carnivorous or not. And it had huge, as you can see, big meaty claws. <laughs> well, actually, they're not meaty. This is the Jurassic World Dominion Therizinosaurus. And one of the few dinosaurs that at the moment in the UK has came out to be the kind of like, you know, the normal size scale that you'd play with action figures. You know, we've had the Giga, um, which was the colossal version, but it didn't, you know, I mean, you can't really do much else with that. It didn't even have its toenails painted. And on the back of the box, you can see all the different kind of actions it has. It has a bitey action, a swipey action. So as we've come to expect from a lot of the Jurassic World Dominion line, We've got the same sort of T-Rex chased by the helicopter and a lovely amber on the bottom. So, without further ado, let's get it out of the bug, shall we? <laughs> there it is! The Therizinosaurus out of the book! <laughs> it was like, give me strength! The Therizinosaurus! Out of the box! <laughs> Look at it to get a good close-up, Whitney. <laughs> it already makes incessant noises and it won't shut the f*** up. James. It's actually quite a chunky boy. Um, so if we have a look here. Yeah, there you go. You get Therizinosaurus in your park today. Well, no, ah! it <laughs> Too late. Too late. You got it. It's fine. So it's really wobbly, actually. Like, I'm, I can just tilt it a little bit and you, you can see you've got like an artic... You've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's just like from the head to the tail, like slits in the body to allow it to, for like more unique kind of movements. So if we push down on the tail, you get like a bitey bite. Although, yeah, it's a bit... It's it's weird. It has, it has like a, a little bit of a stiffness to it. Left and right. Oh, it is literally left and right. Okay. So apparently you got your up and down. Or at least this is up and down. It makes lots of noises. And then you've got your side to side. Is that how it does it? It looks like the arms. The arms themselves, I guess, are posers like, jazz hands! Hello, my baby! Hello, my honey! Hello, my right hand! Again! So you've got some airbrushing uh, for the eyes, and then on the actual eyes themselves, um, they've, like, painted. There's a little eye slit there. It looks pretty decent, actually. It's not too bad. If I did that, and I also did the neck thing, it doesn't feel like the motions supposed to happen. It's kind of just like, well, if you shake it, it kind of just does the thing. You do that. It's, it just feels like I'm wobbling. It's not like an action feature like this, where you press. It's kind of like... Although it does seem to work. 
Uh, you've got articulation in the bottom of the feet as well to help it stand in any peculiar way you see fit. Loads of articulation in the arms as well. I was thinking that the arms would be connected to like the tail so that they would just move and then, uh, or at least the body would stay still and the arms would be able to move. But it seems like they've opted for just having the head and the neck as that. And then, I don't know, you just sort of do that. You don't even need to shake the, uh, the tail, which I guess is kind of what a kid would do anyway. You're not going to be like, like that, are you? You're just going to grab the whole thing and go, yeah! <laughs> I assume so. Oh yeah, there you go. That's a realistic. Now it's like a proper goose. I mean, we haven't really seen too much of the Therizinosaurus in the actual movie, but what I can say is that it looks, or at least, you know, we've seen a little bit of it, but it does seem the colorings are the same. This is even more egregious <laughs> because the arms, as you can see quite clearly here, have uh, not only been painted, but have been airbrushed. Because if you look towards the base of the claws, it goes from a gray to then this weird purpley maroon color. But saying that, they have just left the toenails again. I said, why? <laughs> you have all this paint application. You know, you've airbrushed, you've done like the single white there, you've done the claws, and then you just left the toes. Lovely jumpers. For some other reason, we missed down there. So, we've got now a fair few things to do with Dominion. Let's see how they compare to each other. All right, there you go. What we got so far? So, oh, wow, actually, if we compare this thing to the size of a T-Rex, um, yeah, it's it's actually quite big. And the Therizinosaurus, I feel like everything is just going to take on the Giga. I think, was the Giga a lot of Indominus Rex was used a lot for that? Is it one of the, where it's fighting sort of instinct and need for bloodshed comes into it? Possibly, maybe the Therizinosaurus is going to help out Rexy when it comes up against it in the final movie. I don't know, old speculation, yes. Now that feels like a way better and smoother like mechanic than this. Like, if you look at the spot here to press the button, I can put like my whole thumb on that and press down. There's some sort of spring mechanism built in there to just like whip that mouth back. It's like as soon as I let go, bam. However, if we look at the Therizinosaurus, as you can see quite clearly if you look at the tail, my thumb doesn't fit all the way on that. And then if I press it, I can only go halfway. It's, it is because I got big fingers. Yes, it is. But also, uh, I don't care. <laughs> I don't know, unpolished. Like this, like, bam. I feel that like, oh, that feels good. You want to press it. You feel that, it's slow. You see that? You see the difference? See the difference there, Whitney? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, the, there is a big difference between the two of them. Well, the tail for the Rexy is a lot bigger space for the mechanics to work, especially if they just put it all in the body. Whereas with the Therizinosaurus, you're putting in like the tiniest bit of the tail. So I've spoken enough about that. Let's move on to something else, shall we? Above the chaotic noise that is, you know, these two, you know, that kid playing with as well as kids. Nothing's broken so far, so that's very good. We'll move on to something else. How about a little raptor? There you go! Easy works! It's beautiful! Right, so let's have a look against this! Really, the answer we all want to know is are you able to capture the Therizinosaurus and the devour and crush and drush and whatever it is, uh, a truck we have here. Alright, so what you want to do is you want to clip on the head. Yeah! And then you want to lift it up. Oh, almost! So, there you have it, kind of a, it's kind of like a, a quick review of the Therizinosaurus. Is it a good toy? Objectively, yes. It has a lot of action features, the paint scheme on it's very good, the sculpt, as we always see with Mattel and these things, always looks good. Uh, articulation, you've got loads of it for the claws there, so you can have it swipe different directions. Um, the other action feature, however, this one, doesn't doesn't feel that good. It feels like I'm really having to exert some kind of uh, of force, a lot of force, in order to you know make it do that head thing. So a lot of kids are literally just gonna grab it and just be like, yeah, there you go, slash it around. Again, no painted toes. Don't know why, but because this is like kind of a short review and it's not like a big thing, 
I'm not gonna bother painting it. Mattel, send me, if you send me another one, better be painted. Watch this, there'll be collectors that'll be like, version 2.0 has painted toenails. And this one's like the super rare one before they fixed it or something like that. But anyway, you guys, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and until next time, I'll see you cuties later. Very intimidating with those big meaty claws. Big meaty claws.